Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the presiding officials, General Terrence J. O'Shaughnessy, Commander, North American Aerospace Defense Command and United States Northern Command, and General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., Commander, Pacific Air Forces, welcome to today's Change of Command Ceremony in which the reins of responsibility for the Alaska NORAD Region, Alaskan Command, and 11th Air Force will pass from Lieutenant General Thomas A. Boussier to Lieutenant General David A. Crum. Please stand for the official party and remain standing for the playing of Ruffles and Flourishes, the Canadian and United States National Anthems, the Alaska State Song, and the Invocation by Chaplain Nelson. Chaplain Nelson will now deliver the invocation. Lord, we gather this morning for the change of command as Lieutenant General Thomas Boussier relinquishes command and Lieutenant General David Crum assumes command of Alaskan NORAD Region, Alaskan Command, and 11th Air Force. We are grateful for General Boussier's leadership, mentorship, and guidance. We have appreciated his sense of humor and wisdom. I ask now a blessing upon him and his family as they move now to his new position as Vice Commander at U.S. STRATCOM. Bless them for their service and sacrifices to these commands, Alaska, and to our great nation. Now I ask a blessing upon General Crum. Bless him with the strategic vision and wisdom necessary to continue the successes of his predecessors and build upon it. Bless his staff and those in his charge that they may help him with his important mission as he defends and protects our nation. 
Bless them with wisdom and understanding to bring to him those issues and matters that need his personal attention. Grant his family understanding of the responsibilities that are now placed upon him, and that they now have to share their time with him, with others. Bless them for their sacrifices that they may have made and will make in the future. Bless all those under his command with protection, health, wisdom, and the ability to overcome the trials and obstacles placed before them during this time and any future difficult times that will arise. For these things, I humbly pray for and ask for in your holy name. Thank you, Chaplain Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Thank you all for being in attendance today. It is now my pleasure to introduce General O'Shaughnessy. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm truly honored to be here today, although virtually, as we celebrate this momentous occasion. I certainly appreciate everyone's flexibility. While our ceremony may certainly not look like most chains of commands because of our efforts to flatten the COVID curve, the tradition of passing command remains the same. And command is an unbreakable link, steadfast through all external circumstances. And the special trust and confidence placed in a commander perseveres from the moment they take command to the moment they relinquish command. And I'd like to start by saying thank you to General Brown, my close friend for over three decades. Uh, it's an honor to share this virtual stage with you today. And then to members who couldn't be with us today, but Senator Sullivan, Senator Murkowski, and so many civic leaders like Julie Kitka from AFN and so many others that I know would like to be part of this ceremony today. And of course, we have Mike Shower, who was able to make it into the ceremony today. And then I'd really like to thank all those who have made this virtual command, change of command happen. The innovation, the creativity, to appropriately honor the outbound commander and the inbound commander and their families uh, is incredibly important. And despite COVID-19 and the precautions we have to take, we sincerely appreciate their innovation to make this a, a memorable change of command. And perhaps most importantly, is having those family members present reminds us of the critical important role they play on our teams. And we know command is indeed a team sport. Tom, to you and Barbara, I offer you my deepest appreciation for your committed efforts throughout your time in command. You certainly surpassed all expectations and made Alaska NORAD region and Alaska Command a remarkable fighting force. I also want to express my gratitude to your kids, Alex, Joe, Chris, and Dee, for the multitude of sacrifices and their enduring support throughout your career in well in command. And to all the families watching today, I sincerely thank you for the continuous sacrifices that you made to support the mission and your members. We certainly can't do this without you. And Kohler, to you and Lisa and your kids, Allie, Katie, Clay, welcome to the Northcom and NORAD teams. We're very excited to have you soon command and continue the legacy left before you by Tom and Barb. And Northcom and NORAD stand ready to assist you and your team in every way, and you're taking over an accomplished command that is ready to respond to today's challenges in the very challenging security environment. And Cool, I've known you for a long time, and I honestly could not think of a better team to come in and fill the big shoes of Tom and Barbara. And to all the members of Alaska Command and the Alaska Moore region, you're the guardians of the North. You've demonstrated resolve, strength, and commitment. And both the commands conduct a critical mission for homeland defense and have established themselves as a reputable forces capable of achieving broad mission sets and success, which has been maintained by great people and a strong leader. And Tom, no speech is gonna capture what you've accomplished during your command. There's just simply too much to capture. What I will say though, is that your leadership, your dedication, and your collaborative approach with our many partners is an example to all of us. Whether it's your multiple bosses, which of course includes CQ and myself, but also Barb, uh, whether it's the higher headquarters, your Alaska command team, subordinate commands, international partners, or interagency inter partners, you showed us by example, what right looks like. You and your team have set the benchmark for home and defense efforts. Every time you face a challenge, you figure out a way to get the job done. And your team has answered the call every time, even in the most adverse conditions, and even during the COVID environment. Alaska Command, Alaska Norwegian has remained at the highest levels of readiness and conducted your sustained operations for 
without ever faltering. You have strengthened our partnerships with Alaska Natives and Canada, helped to promote a more secure North America. Your efforts on the northernmost territories of Alaska have brought prosperity to the region, and your advocacy for Alaska as a strategic location would make even Billy Mitchell proud. And you brought discipline to many of the processes critical to our efforts to defend our homeland. You formalized the processes between NORTHCOM and INDOPACOM, and majestically, you've been balanced the many hats that you wear and be able to support multiple commands and multiple missions. And your role in furthering partnerships with industry is increased readiness in the Arctic. Additionally, you fostered Arctic nation relations through shared challenges and solutions, and teaming with our mutual friend, Julie Kitka, president of the Alaska Federation of Natives. Don, you've been a remarkable leader. You've built a force to be reckoned with. You have stood the watch with unparalleled professionalism and the highest ideals of honor and integrity. And even while dealing with the COVID-19 virus, you've responded to Russian aviation, sending AWACS, AWACS literally to the North Pole and F-22 hundreds of miles beyond our aids with a clear message to our adversaries that we have the watch and we will not falter. Alaska, our military, and our great nation are better off because of you. And as you embark on your next journey at STRATCOM, we won't forget about the lasting impact you've made here. So thank you, Tom and Barbara. Cooler, as I said, I can't think of a better person and a better team to take on those great commands. You're a proven leader who successfully commanded at every level. You embody the warrior ethos and serve as an outstanding example to all who are under your charge. But this job will challenge you in ways you could not imagine. But I'm confident in your ability to prioritize our homeland defense efforts as you're no stranger to our command or its mission. But you're not accepting this responsibility alone. Under your charge is our nation's finest fighting force. They're eager to defend our homeland at any cost and share the same bond of accepting the solemn obligation of protecting our homeland. And to the team, I want to extend my thanks to you. There's no calling more sacred than a life of service. I can't think of any mission more rewarding than one in direct support of homeland defense. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being on the watch today and into the future and bearing witness to the change of command between two great leaders and supporting those who enable our mission's success. Together we have the watch and there is no finer team that I can share this responsibility with. So thank you very much. And we will continue to not falter as we maintain our watch. Welcome Cooler and thank you Tom. Thank you, General O'Shaughnessy. It is now my pleasure to introduce General Brown. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, and let me start by acknowledging the, the virtual elephant in the room. Uh, COVID-19 has impacted uh, and challenged every aspect of our daily lives, including our long-held traditions of changes of command. Now, while we remain uh, fiscally uh, disconnected, I'm very pleased that we're able to connect today. Uh, I'm honored to. Uh, Co-officiate the sermon of the good friend, uh, uh, General Shaughnessy, and uh, a chance in this change of command sermon to honor two outstanding uh, Air Force leaders and two outstanding Air Force families. Now, 11th Air Force Command is, a, is a position is uh, unique. 11th Air Force Commander has to juggle um, three separate command hats to guarantee one unified goal, the defense of our nation. Oftentimes, the uh, challenges uh, of the three separate command responsibilities requires a vote their force commander to innovate and find ways to yes and keep both of his bosses happy. Video teleconference may not be the most ideal method to accomplish a change command ceremony, but the innovative spirit of the love of their force and our collective staff is guaranteed an appropriate ceremony for this change in leadership. Today's crowd may be small in number, but it's not diminished the importance of today's ceremony. And the appreciation for those attending, those watching live, those that will watch the video in the future, and those who worked to make it all possible. Now, I'd be remiss, remiss if I did not thank Barb Busey for her support and efforts behind the scenes, and her devotion to Tom and the Evan and families of the Levitt Air Force. To Alex, Joe, Chris, and Dee, there's no doubt in my mind that your love and support were essential to your current success here at the Levitt Air Force. Lisa, uh, thanks for your dedication, your guiding hand, and your compassion that undoubtedly will be valuable throughout this upcoming assignment. Allie, Katie, and Clay, thanks for also for your love and support you provided your parents that I'm sure will continue as they take on their new role. 
Don Boucher and his hometown high school sweetheart, Bob, have been a dynamic duo for 11th Air Force. Tom immediately came in to 11th Air Force and set three priorities. Peer and near-peer conflict readiness, partnerships, and innovation. When it comes to peer and near-peer conflicts and readiness, recognizing the strategic significance of 11th Air Force, Tom fiercely instituted a fifth-gen mindset as the Indo-PACOM and ROCOM community area. Tom is ushering in the first Air Force F-35s in the back act. And unfortunately, the first one will land tomorrow, just after he gives up the flag. Well done to hand off the cooler, but I really do appreciate your work there. You also instituted some changes in our F-22 alert procedures. And the one thing I think that I will always remember about you is that you identified and addressed the various scenes between Indo-PACOM and ROCOM. It was always obvious when you found out, you come to me and go, hey, guess what else I found out? And then you come up with a way to solve it. Not just what you found out, but the approach you took to solve and develop repeatable and responsive processes to ensure our readiness. This is a fact very symmetric advantage to our ability to build, sustain, and bolster partnerships at all levels. Tom has taken a holistic approach to this priority. He forged ironclad partnerships with the local and state leaders. Additionally, he highlighted the importance of total force integration and pushed for Alaska and Norad region detachments to be stood up at Jay Berg and Allison. Finally, he's guaranteed unrivaled success in training of our foreign partners that travel the Red Flag Alaska. Innovation is more than just adding capabilities and types of numbers. It is a spirit and mindset. Innovation is about rethinking how we think and empowering those we lead. Always looking to push the envelope, Tom relentlessly pursued the Joint Pacific Alaska Region Complex or J Park modernization and to develop J Park as a fifth gen training range of excellence. These are only a few examples of your leadership, your willingness to challenge the status quo, and desire to improve 11th Air Force capabilities. All with the eye contributing to Pat Gas pursuit to be ready, resilient, and posture for the future. There are no words to express the overall influence that you have had on PACAT or 11th Air Force. I'm confident you and Bart will continue to have an influence on our national security and the welfare of our service members and their families as you transition to U.S. strategic command. Tom and Bart, Trina and I wish you good luck, Godspeed, and all the best to both you and your family as you depart PAC, the PACAT team. Thank you for all you've done and all you will continue to do. To our newest Lieutenant General of the United States Air Force, Kula Perona. And Lisa, join us after escaping a four year stint at the Pentagon. And I know you're pretty happy to, uh, to get away. Uh, Lisa not only serves alongside uh, Kula, but she's also as a foundation support, but she's also sort of shouldered an additional obligation to our nation as a member of the Tragedy Assistant Program for Survivors. Finding out the uh, crumb team or their children. Allie and Kate, who are both attending Auburn, uh, Clover's alma mater, and Clay, who just completed his freshman year, uh, completing his freshman year at Auburn. Lisa, Allie, Kate, and Clay, although Cooler is being recognized today with a promotion and an opportunity to lead the next level, due to your support and sacrifices, you also deserve recognition as the unsung heroes that made Cooler's success possible. And for that, we owe all you a debt of gratitude. A cooler as you come in to lead the left Air Force and have, and have I already haven't had a distinguished Air Force career to date. Matter of fact, uh, he's been a distinguished graduate from every Air Force course he's attended. He's a combat proven aviator and no stranger to back gap. His first operational assignment was to fly at 15 at Kadena. And most recently, Kula served as a 5th Air Force Vice Commander at ECODE Air Base. And in between those two assignments, Kula had a series of assignments that prepared him for this very opportunity. He completed fellowships at the State Department and at Harvard that were focused on China. He was part of the F-22 initial cadre, and that background will be helpful as we bring PACAS first F-35s to the 11th Air Force. Receiving this opportunity, Cooler spent four years in the Pentagon working requirements and acquisition for the Air Force and the Joint Team. So what does this all mean for the 11th Air Force Airmen and their families? It means that the leader taking command today is innovative, willing and ready to implement changes that make the 11th Air Force better, prepared, more efficient and posture for the future. The steep importance of building partnerships both locally and internationally, and simply qualified to build upon 
11th Air Force Conference achieved under Lieutenant General Boussier's leadership. Quote on Lisa, Sharina and I wish you a warm and a virtual welcome to PACAF family. We are confident that the 11th Air Force is being turned over to the best possible hands to care for our airmen and families, advance local and state and international relationships, and fortify regional security, joint and international interoperability, and innovation endeavors. The day-to-day work accomplished by the men and women of the 11th Air Force is pivotal to our nation and PACAF's ability to remain ready, resilient, and postured for the future. Quote, I have no doubt that under your leadership, the 11th Air Force Airmen will ensure PACAF can compete, deter, assure, and should our nation call, be ready to fight and win. Let me close by saying it's an honor to be with you at all this special day for the Boussiers, for the Crumbs, for PACAF, and for the 11th Air Force. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, General Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Defense Distinguished Service Medal and the Alaska Legion of Merit to Lieutenant General Boussier. Publish the order. Attention to orders. Lieutenant General Thomas A. Boussier, United States Air Force, distinguished himself by exceptionally distinguished service as Commander, Alaskan North American Aerospace Defense Command Region, Alaskan Command, and 11th Air Force, Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson, Alaska, from August 2018 to April 2020. During this period, the outstanding leadership and ceaseless efforts of General Boussier resulted in enhanced military capabilities in a joint environment with an increased awareness of Arctic issues. His steadfast leadership resulted in Alaska-based forces prepared to defend North American air sovereignty and posture to counter a resurgence in foreign aviation incursions into the Alaska Air Defense Identification Zone. As Senior Department of Defense Official for Tribal Consultations in Alaska, General Boussier developed a deep rapport with Alaska Native communities. His initiatives forged new interpersonal relationships, understanding, and increased dialogue between the military, Native tribes, and corporations. In a special tribute to his commitment to the Alaska Native tribes, he received the highest honors when representatives of three Alaska Native culture groups bestowed Native names upon him, showing their deep respect and admiration for him. The distinctive accomplishments of Lieutenant General Boussier reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the Department of Defense. <laughs> On behalf of the Honorable Michael Dunleavy, Governor of the State of Alaska, who was unable to be here today, we will now present the Alaska Legion of Merit to Lieutenant General Boussier. Attention to orders. This is to certify that the Governor of Alaska has awarded the Alaska Legion of Merit to Lieutenant General Thomas A. Boussier for exceptionally meritorious service to the State of Alaska from 24 August 2018 to 20 April 2020 as the Commander, Alaskan North American Aerospace Defense Command Region, Alaskan Command, and 11th Air Force, Joint Base Elmendorf-Richardson, Alaska. During this period, General Boussier's steadfast leadership and commitment to total force integration with Alaskan-based forces, interagency partners, and Alaska Native communities has been foundational in advancing military readiness for the state of Alaska. General Boussier has strengthened relations with the Department of Defense, federal, state, local, and tribal partners while focusing on the demands of an ever-changing Arctic region. Furthermore, General Boussier conducted the most thorough search and rescue personnel recovery evaluation ever undertaken in the Alaskan Joint Operations Area, resulting in unparalleled United States Northern Command North American Aerospace Defense Validation and an exponential increase in both civilian and military survivability in the Arctic. Under General Boussier's leadership, the Alaskan North American Aerospace Defense Command Region performed 43 intercepts in support of, of 24-7 
Air Sovereignty Mission, supporting over 270 flying hours and 3 million pounds of fuel offloaded, reinvigorating the strategic importance of Alaska with mission partners and reinforcing the doctrinal relationship of Title X forces in support of the Governor of Alaska. General Boussier's superior leadership, total force focus, and unwavering support reflect great credit upon himself, the United States Air Force, and the state of Alaska. First of all, to uh, General Chauncey and General Brown, uh, Barb and I would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity, the absolute awesome opportunity, to serve in Alaska and, uh, and shepherd the phenomenal teams of uh, airmen and their families. In Alaska. So uh, the mission's important, the people are motivated, and uh, there's no better place uh, to have the opportunity and the privilege to command than in Alaska. I'd like to also thank uh, Matt and Rue and the team, Tamika, for setting today up. This is a very unique change of command ceremony, and, and again, you're setting the template probably for PACAP and the Air Force as they do change of commands in COVID-19 uh, restrictions. Um, I've been very blessed. Uh, I could not have asked for a greater partner in crime than Chief Wolf and his lovely wife, Danielle. Um, I'm only sad in that we don't get to serve more. Uh, but you never know. Maybe our paths will cross again someday. And then boss, uh, or both bosses, uh, you all know that I've been extremely blessed with uh, General Pete Andresiak, General Scott Clancy, and uh, Colonel Bonai uh, in my three command hats. And I, I would have not picked anybody else to have the privilege of being uh, partners in command than Scott, Pete, and Leash. Um, I would like to uh, welcome the crumbs to Alaska. I wish I was sitting where you are, um, but uh, you will have the absolute wonderful time in Alaska. It's an amazing place with amazing people and amazing mission. The staffs in Alaska Command, Alaska Norad Region, 11th Air Force, although not large, they carry uh, outstanding uh, performance and they improve it time and time again. So to the, the greater joint team, uh, you'll be in great hands with the, the crumbs, and uh, please uh, carry out uh, your duties as, as just as professional as you have done with uh, Barb and I at the helm. So thank you, and Godspeed. The Assumption of Command Ceremony is a military tradition deeply rooted in history, dating back to July 3, 1775, when General George Washington drew his sword under an elm tree in Cambridge, Massachusetts, to assume command of the Continental Army. During the American Revolution, military units carried distinctive flags designed to match the color of their uniforms and emblazoned with their unit motto. When soldiers followed their leader into battle, this flag, referred to as the unit colors, provided a highly visible point around which members of the unit could rally. Because of its importance, the colors were used in the earliest change of command ceremonies to symbolize the commander's authority, and that tradition continues today. Chief Master Sergeant David R. Wolfe, Senior Enlisted Leader for Alaskan NORAD Region and Alaskan Command, and the Command Chief for 11th Air Force is the color bearer for today's ceremony. The passing of the color signifies the passing of responsibilities from one commander to another. Please stand for the formal change of command. Publish your order. Attention to orders. From headquarters, North American Aerospace Defense Command, Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado, special order number G10403. By direction of the President, Lieutenant General David A. Crum, United States Air Force, is appointed Commander of Alaska North American Aerospace Defense Command Region, effective 20 April 2020. Sir, I relinquish command. Well done, Tom. Sir, I assume command. Lead boldly, Corps.
Publish the order. Attention to orders. From headquarters, United States Northern Command, Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado, special order number G10402. By direction of the President, Lieutenant General David A. Crum, United States Air Force, is appointed Commander of Alaskan Command, effective 20 April 2020. Sir, I relinquish command. Well done. Sir, I assume command. You have a great team, Court. Attention to orders from Headquarters Pacific Air Forces, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam, Hawaii, Special Order Number GK079. By direction of the President, Lieutenant General David A. Crum, United States Air Force, is appointed Commander of 11th Air Force, effective 20 April 2020. Sir, I command. Well done, Tom. Good luck. Thank you, General Crum. And on behalf of the men and women of the combined headquarters, we would like to welcome you and your family to Alaska. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending and have a pleasant day.